Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video we're going to be doing a little sheet load alternative using the September 2023 sheet load of cards. Instead of 12 by 12 paper I'm going to show you how you can use your 6 by 6. I hope you'll stick around and see how we're going to switch it up. Earlier this month, I shared with you the brand new sheet load of cards, September 2023, which was special in two ways. Not only is it the 50th free edition I've shared here on YouTube, it is also the first time I've made a 5x7 sketch. And I have to say, after the input from all of you, I'm sure we're going to see some more 5x7s in the future. I know I had a lot of fun with it, my team did, and it looks and sounds like you guys are too. Originally, this called for 12 by 12 paper, but I did want to show you how you could use your 6 by 6 if that's what you have more of or if that's what you want to use. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can use two pieces of 6 by 6 paper and some cardstock to make three 5 by 7 cards. We won't be using the cutting guides from the free printable. We will be using the single card dimensions that I always give here on the front. Now if you don't yet have this printable, make sure to check out the debut video in that description box below and I also have a link to the process video where I show you how I made my first set using the 12 by 12 paper to get 12 5 by 7 cards. The main feature today of the cards is of course going to be the paper. And I will be using Not Too Shabby's new Trip to the Orchard. I got this for being part of the quarterly design team, and I thought this would work great for some more fall 5x7 cards. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to recognize the following channel members for upgrading to paper trimmer level member. That is Brenda Gentry and Michelle Cook. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. I pre-chose two papers for today's cards, this pretty plaid and the trucks with pumpkins. Now unlike the original set where you could mix and match the centers and the outsides, today the plaids will always be the one in the center and the trucks will be the two strips on the outside. I'm going to start by cutting six strips that are one inch wide from the truck and pumpkin paper. We won't need to worry about cutting the height because the finished size should be one by six inches. Now when you cut it, you want to make sure not to do what I call generous cuts since you will need that entire six inch width. On my trimmer, what I did, I would center between the one inch line on the left and whatever should be left. So for that first cut, it was five inches on the right. And that way I got uniform pieces and I didn't cut too much so that the last strip ended up being something like three quarters of an inch. For the plaid paper, we're going to cut that for the center strip on each card. So I cut three pieces that were one and three quarters inches wide. This does leave us a little scrap left over and later I'll show you how I use this for the inside so we don't have any pattern paper scraps left today. Before getting started on this video, I did go ahead and prepare my card bases, my pattern paper mat, and that skinny strip mat that goes across the center. Now the original sketch called for using the same color as the card base to go across the middle, but I decided to use this orange speckled paper from the paper pad since it was still kind of that orangey color, but it added a little extra decoration. 
I cut three strips from this piece of paper that were one inch and then for the width I cut them down to five and one sixteenth inches wide. This is just so later when I mat it with the brown cardstock mat and put it on the card front I'll have a little wiggle room just in case the card front wasn't exactly five inches. Now the pieces are ready so we can start putting our cards together. Just like in the original process video, I'm going to do the outside two strips first and then center the center one between those two. This just makes it easier for me for more uniform placement. And I just use that same process for the remaining two card fronts. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not yet a subscriber of my channel, First of all, I would like to say welcome, and secondly, I would love to invite you to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Once all of my vertical strips were on the mat, it was time to put together the two pieces for that center band. Once again, just like in the original process video, I brought in my score buddy to help me get one of the ends aligned when I put these together. This just gives me a nice ledge where I can place my cardstock mat, center my pattern paper on there, and make sure that they're both straight up against that edge at the bottom. Now you don't have to use a score buddy for this, you can use anything that might have a little ledge. Once those three middle bands were all adhered together, it was time to put the pieces on card bases. I did use flat adhesive for everything, but you could definitely pop up that middle band with foam tape if you wanted a little added dimension. Once again, for the bands, I brought back in that score buddy, and this just helped me get the corner of the card lined up with the left edge of that strip. And there is that little bit of overhang from me cutting them at 5 and 1 16th inches, but we're just going to take care of that quickly with a pair of non stick scissors. For my focal points today, I'm going to skip the semicircle from the original sketch. Instead, I'm going to stamp a big bold sentiment and accent it with a few of those vines from that same set. I will be using Tailored Expressions Candy Corn and Sweet Basil inks. I started with the little viney accent stamp and I used my Misty to set this up and do the stamping. I kind of put that in the middle of the cardstock from top to bottom and then once I inked it up and stamped it, I moved my piece of cardstock about a half of an inch and then just inked up the stamp once again. And I repeated this process until I ended up having 10. I wanted an extra one just in case. I got my sentiment set up in the Mini Misty and for this I'll be using candy corn ink. The sentiment reads, give thanks with a grateful heart. I thought it was an appropriate sentiment for this season and the feel of these cards. And for this I set it up in the lower right hand corner and I did go ahead and ink it twice just to get a nice bold orange and I just stamped until I had three total sentiments. Then I took the sentiments and the little viney pieces off camera with their coordinating dies and cut those out. Also off camera, I added foam tape to the back of the die cut sentiments so I had a little dimension on these cards. Once those were kind of centered there left to right on the plaid strip, I wanted to add the vines to make it look like they were kind of poking out from the background. To do this, I used a trio on each, two on the left and one on the right, and I used my Barely Art glue to adhere these in place. I continued adding those pieces to each of the card fronts and let these dry for about five minutes. While I was off camera, I decorated the inside, I added a piece of white cardstock for the personal message, stamped a pumpkin in that lower left hand corner, and I used up the remaining scrap that I showed you earlier to put a little banner on the inside. Here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I used 6x6 papers with the September 2023 sheet load of cards. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.